message tonight. And I pray that it will just be another effort to help us be what we ought to be. I pray that somebody else will get the idea tonight as we bring the message. Speak to our hearts. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church tonight. Amen. I spoke this morning on the subject, Independence, the Only Real Sin. I speak tonight on dependence, the only thing that pleases God. Or, dependency, the only thing that pleases God. May I ask you to let me reason with you very delicately just for a few minutes in beginning. I said a while ago that the Bible is a book of hundreds and thousands of reasons and ways telling man how he can be to God what God created man to be in order that God may be able to do for man what man needs done for him. We read a while ago, and you need not turn to it, but let me read this passage to you. As I read it, remember that this passage is a prophecy of the redeemed, I think, the 24 elders in Revelation, represent all of the priests the priest of God or, or believers. And it says that in that time, in the end time, that these 24 elders, I think representing all believers or priests of God, say this, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Now let's bear in mind this, that in this passage we're talking about perfect praise and pleasure to God. We will in this day have our glorified bodies, we will have these glass darklies removed, and shall see him as he is. And we shall be like him, which means we'll be able to praise him exactly as he wants to be praised. And how does he want to be praised? It tells us there. It says we say worthy is him. And we say honor and glory and praise be unto him who created us for his own pleasure. We read three scriptures a while ago. I called your attention. One says, For thy pleasure they are and were created. That's what we just mentioned and what I just read for you. Now follow that carefully. For thy pleasure they are and were created. You were created and I was created for God's pleasure. Not yours. Did you get that? God didn't, God didn't create you to go to the amusement park. Now, I'm not, I'm not against going to the amusement park. To me, it's not pleasure. It scares the daylights out of me. <laughs> but God did not create you for your pleasure. He didn't do it. And yet the truth is, most of the people in this room spend much of their time when they're not working for their own pleasure. God created you for His pleasure. That's why He made you. Now, if you're, not, if you're not living your life for his pleasure, you're committing the only real sin a person can commit. You're not being to God what God created you to be. So it says, for thy pleasure we were created. His pleasure we were created. Note the second passage. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. All right, now, now follow me carefully. What is God's pleasure? Our faith. What is our faith? Our dependence upon Him. So what makes God have pleasure when we depend upon Him? That's God's pleasure. Some folks have pleasure playing baseball. God doesn't. Some folks have pleasure playing football or watching it. God doesn't. Some folks have pleasure eating. That's preaching. God's in this place, folks. And... Uh, but God has pleasure. What's God's pleasure? Our dependence upon Him. It says, without faith it is impossible to please Him. 
Now listen to me. I don't care what you do. If it's not wrapped up in faith, it doesn't please God. Faith, And the word faith, I'm going to use the word dependency. Without dependence upon God or dependency upon God, it is impossible to please God. Third scripture. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Now follow me carefully, and this is a little bit of review of this morning, and then I'm going, to, and I'm going to go a little further. You have one choice of two. Depend on God and please Him, or don't depend on God and sin. No middle ground. No middle ground. If you do anything in this life, in your own strength, without dependence upon God, you sin. And you don't please Him. For it is dependency that pleases Him. When God's people depend upon Him, He's pleased. I said this morning that repentance basically is turning from independence to dependence. So the degree of your dependence, are you listening? You might need this someday, who knows? Your degree of dependence upon God reveals the degree of your repentance. We talk about repentance from sins. How about repentance from sin? The great package that holds all sins is the package called independence. I can make it without God, so why obey His Word? I don't need to be dependent upon what He says. I don't need to depend upon His instructions. I don't need to depend upon His care. I don't need to obey His Word. I know better than He does. I know the Bible says don't marry an unsaved person, but I know better. I know a lot better than that. And, and that is sin. I said this morning, the Bible said that to the wicked, plowing is sin. Is anything wrong with plowing? No, I've done my share of it. I was a young man, a kid. And nothing wrong with plowing. Plowing is a good, honorable thing. But if you plow without dependence upon God, it's sin. If you work in a grocery store without dependence on God, it's sin. If you're a custodian, sweep out the place without dependence upon God, it's sin. That which is not of faith is sin. That which is not of faith is sin. So you have one or two two choices. Either what you do, you do in dependence on God, or and, and that pleases Him. And the sin is not pleasing Him. Now look at me. Listen carefully to me. God made you for His pleasure. If you do not live for His pleasure, then you sin. Because you are, you are not obeying the purpose for your creation. How then can you please Him and live for His pleasure? He tells you, dependence upon Him. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. You sing a song, without faith, it doesn't please God. You dig a ditch, without faith, it doesn't please God. God wants us to be dependent on Him. Now then the conclusions of that are this, not the conclusion of the sermon, this introduction of the sermon. We, one, we are created for His pleasure. Two, only faith can give Him this pleasure. Or dependency can give Him this pleasure. Number three, if it is not dependency, it is sin. I wish I could burn this into your breast tonight. I wish somehow we could get a concept of what sin is. Sin is what irritates us. We don't like to see a drunk in the street. He bothers us, so he's a dirty sinner. But the thing that irritates God goes way back before the drinking. We don't like to see a fellow uh, leave his wife and kids. That bothers us, so that's bad sin. It is bad sin, but the sin was just as bad way back yonder a long time before he left his wife and kids. You see, our degree of sin is dependent upon our degree of discomfort with the sin or the act that was committed. But God's discomfort started when you, didn't, uh, when you didn't depend on Him. God's discomfort started when you worked in your own strength, your own power. God's discomfort started a long time back then. See, to God, sin is not being pleasing to Him. And dependency is what is pleasing to Him. And if we're not dependent upon Him, we're not pleasing Him, and the alternative is sin. You understand what I'm saying? All right? Now then, follow me carefully. This is exactly what caused man to fall. Now, I'm going to give you a little Bible study here. This is exactly what caused man to fall in the Garden of Eden. This is exactly what Satan did to Eve. Now, now don't, don't miss this. You see, Satan came to Eve and said to... He didn't say to Eve, don't believe in God. 
He didn't say that. He didn't say be an atheist. Madeline Murray O'Hare is not the devil's best pet. I mean, nobody won't claim her, not even the devil. She's not the devil's pride and joy. The devil's not proud of the drunk that stumbles in the gutter tonight. That, that's not his pride and joy. The devil didn't say, Eve, go out and, and, and get, get drunk. No, he didn't say that. Didn't say, Eve, go out and be a prostitute. He didn't say that. He came to Eve and said, Eve, how would you like to be as gods, knowing good and evil? He came to Eve and said, you can be God conscious. Now, hear me carefully. Don't miss this. Satan's temptation to Eve was trying to get her to be God conscious instead of God dependent. The devil doesn't mind you being God conscious. He knows that's not what pleases God. He knows that dependence on God pleases God. So if the devil can get you God conscious and not God dependent, he has you displeasing God. And that's why the devil hates God. I mean, he tried to take over back yonder before creation, and God kicked him out. And the devil didn't like that. He, he put him in a bad humor. And so because of that, the devil hates God. And the devil's trying to aggravate God. And the devil does not want God pleased. Consequently, since he does not want God pleased, he's trying to keep us from doing the thing that pleases God. And he knows that it's dependence on God, that ple our dependence on God that pleases God. The devil comes and says, believe in him, but don't depend on him. And the devil knows that's displeasing to God. And the devil knows that's sin. You believe on God, don't depend on God, that's sin. Because if without faith, it's impossible to please God. And that which is not of faith is sin. So the devil comes to Eve and says to Eve, says, you can be God conscious. But don't be God dependent. That's what he says to you tonight. He loves the morning worship service of the average church this morning. He loves for folks to come to church and sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, then leave and go out of here, live like a devil all week long and not depend on God for one single thing. He loves that. He loves the ritualistic worship service. He loves it. Why? The devil loves it when he can get you so conscious of God, you will not depend on God. Because the devil knows that's what pleases God. So the, devil, the, the purpose of the devil is not trying to wreck your life necessarily. The only reason the devil wants to wreck your life is so God won't get the glory from your life that he, that, 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 he, that he wants. And if the devil can keep you from pleasing God, he's happy. Now, these, these things that, that we call displeasing, and they are displeasing. I'm talking about drunkenness. I'm talking about lying. I'm talking about stealing. I'm talking about immorality. I'm talking about murder. I'm talking about cheating. All those things. Those things are surface things that come from one root. And the thing that caused Adam and Eve to fall in the Garden of Eden was not eating an apple. It was a pear. It was not eating a piece of, a, a piece of fruit that caused Adam and Eve to fall. The thing that caused the whole human race to fall was, they, was, was the, the, the creature that God made for His pleasure did not please Him. And what pleased Him? Dependency. Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. They were depending upon God. And that pleased God. Satan came along and said, Believe in Him. If you want to, even love Him. But don't depend on Him. Doesn't say without love. Doesn't say that which is not love is sin. Doesn't say without love it is impossible to please God. It says without faith. God wants us to depend on Him. The devil comes to Eve and says, Eve, you be God conscious. He even goes farther than that. He even says you be God-like. But don't depend on him. The devil doesn't mind a young man coming to Howells Anderson College preparing for the ministry who believes in God with all of his heart but doesn't depend on God for all of his needs. God, let me say it again. God's pleasure is being depended on. And anything that does not please God is sin. So since what pleases God is our dependence on Him, then if we do not depend on Him, we do not please God, and that is sin. You understand me? I mean that sin like drunkenness is sin. I mean that sin like stealing is sin. I mean that sin like cursing is sin. And the righteous Christian who sits on the airplane beside a sot but the Christian is serving in his own energy, in his own power, does not walk in the Spirit, does not depend on God's Holy Spirit, does not depend on God, self-righteous, 
or Coca-Cola or milk drinking or lemonade drinking or apple juice drinking Christian who sits beside the sot who's drinking his, his Jack Daniel liquor is just as much a sinner. Why? The thing about it is not that the fellow's drinking. It's the fact that God wants to be pleased. We were made for his pleasure. And the thing that pleases God is our dependence on him. And if we don't depend on him, that's what sin is. Satan said to Eve, you can be God-like, but don't be God-dependent. Satan said to Eve, you can be good. Satan didn't come to Eve and tell her to be bad, as we count being bad, but as God counts being bad. Satan said, you can be good. I want you to be good. But Eve said, don't depend on God. Why? Why? Because because that's what pleases God. The devil said to himself, I don't like God. I was chosen as Lucifer, as the son of the morning. I was second command. I was the prime, I was the, uh, the vice president. I was his choice archangel. And I said, I will exalt myself. I will exalt myself. And because of that, God cast me out of heaven and consigned me to hell forever and ever and ever. And I don't like that. And though I know I'm going to hell, and I know I'm going to burn forever, I'm going to take everybody I can to hell with me. Listen, the reason the devil wants to take you to hell is not to get you to burn. He doesn't care what temperature you are. The devil doesn't care whether you're hot or cold. He's not concerned how comfortable you are. The devil wants to get you to hell because that will displease God. So if the devil can get you not to trust in God and not to depend on God, then the devil has you. Are you listening? The devil has you where he wants you. And he knows he can get you consigned to hell forever. But you can't please God in hell. That's for dead sure. That's why he wants you in hell. Oh, to see if Christians can somehow grow up and see what's going on in this book here. There's more to it than you not burning in hell. You can't pre- you can't you can't depend on God burning in hell. You can't glorify Him burning in hell. You can't worship Him burning in hell. You can't exalt Him burning in hell. You can't believe in Him burning in hell. The devil's not concerned about getting you burning, though he, he will. The devil's concerned about getting you not to please God because the devil hates God. And the devil says, I don't want God to be pleased. I don't want... That's just like somebody that, that hates somebody and says, I want to make everybody hate Him. That's exactly what it is. Somebody hates another person and, uh, and, and has a crusade to do what he can to get somebody uh, not to like that person, not to follow that person, and, uh, and to do ill to that person. Same thing exactly. The devil says, God has mistreated me and God has consigned me to hell. And I tried to take over heaven and couldn't. And he said, I'm going to go to everybody I can and I'm going to tell them not to depend on God. Believe in God, yes, but don't depend on God because that's what pleases God. Be like God, yes, if you want to, but don't depend. Depend on God because that's what pleases God. And he said, uh, you can be good without dependence. You can believe on him, worship him, be like him, be conscious of him, even give to him. But don't depend on him. It's very interesting. The devil didn't even tell Eve to oppose God. But don't be dependent on him, is what he said. Because that's all that pleases God. Now listen to me carefully. Follow me carefully. Don't leave me now. Satan's greatest trophy is the liberal, not the drunk. Satan's favorite activity at 11 o'clock this morning was not the nightclub or the country club. It was the liberal church. Because the devil wants to get us to thinking... We're serving God and pleasing God without pleasing God. The drunk knows he needs help. Now this is the same thing. Now this is a little touchy. This is a little little deep here for me. Probably won't be for you. But that's exactly what he did when he tempted Jesus. Now follow me carefully. Jesus came as a man filled with the Holy Spirit. His ministry on earth was not a ministry of God on earth, but a Holy Spirit-filled man on earth. And he had to be. 
It was necessary. Now, Jesus said in, in Romans 15, 3, for, for, or, or Paul said about it, for even Christ pleased not himself. Hear me now. Jesus did not come to earth to please himself. He came to earth to please the Father. It says in John 8, 29, For I do always those things that please Him. Now, now listen carefully. If that's the truth, if Jesus always did what pleases God, you tell me what pleases God. Tell me. Out loud. Dependence on Him, right? All right. Or faith. What pleases God? Say it. Dependence. Say it again. Dependence on God. Or what? Or what? Or what? Faith. All right. So, if Jesus pleased the Father, then what did He do? He depended on the Father, you see. Now, follow me carefully. Suppose Jesus had come to earth. Oh, listen, this is, this, this is tremendous. Suppose Jesus had come to earth as God to please himself. He could not have pleased the Father. And because of that, he would not have had faith. Wouldn't live by faith. And whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Jesus wouldn't have had to get drunk to, 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 to not be to, to not been our Savior. All he had to do is please himself. So Jesus emptied himself of deity, became man, and all the work that he did was in the energy and power of a man yielded completely to the Holy Spirit of God. So what did he do? He pleased the Father. That's why the Father said in Matthew 3, 17, when our Lord was baptized, This is my beloved Son in whom I am what? Say it. In whom I am well? In whom I am well? Are you listening? All right. Now, why was he pleased? Okay, what pleases God? Dependence. Or what? Faith. So that means when Jesus, when the Father... <laughs> said from heaven, this is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. He was saying, this is my beloved son, who was what on me? Dependent on me. That's why he was pleased. He wasn't pleased because Jesus was getting baptized. He was pleased because Jesus was dependent on him. And the getting baptized was a symbol of that dependence on him. You don't understand this, do you? Now follow me again. That's what the devil tried to get Jesus to do. Well, he didn't try to get Jesus to do anything real wicked. He didn't say, we say, boy, well, Jesus was tempted like I am. Well, in, 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 that's exactly true. But, his temp but you mean the surface temptation and God means the bloodstream temptation. He came to Jesus and said, command these stones be made bread. That's no great miracle. Young, young wives all of this room make <laughs> bread into stone. Now, why did he say, make these stones bread? Because he was saying, do it yourself! Do it yourself! If Jesus Christ had made those stones into bread as God, it would not have been in dependence on the Father. So it would not have been in faith. And whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. Sin. So it is imperative that Jesus not do that as God. He cannot do it as God. And the devil, listen, the devil was trying to get our sacrifice blemished. That dirty, rotten, stinking, boy, I feel like that guy went to college at me one time. He was a wicked guy and he got saved, came to college and, and, and got called to a church. And boy, he had the worst vocabulary you ever saw in your life, ever heard in your life before he got saved. He had six kids and the guy was a big, tall, old, strapping Texas rancher. He came to our college in the First Baptist Church of Redwater, Texas, called him to be the pastor. He was up there preaching one Sunday morning on the devil, and he, he, his theology was wrong, but here's what he said. He said the devil got Jesus on the cross, and the devil put a crown of thorns on his head, and the devil put a spear in his side and nails in his hands and feet, and he said that's what the devil did. He said, you know what I think of the devil? He's a dirty... And he pulled out every filthy word that you sailors ever heard in your life. And used every dirty, rotten word in, in I mean, filth and, 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 and cursing profanity. And he spent about five minutes just cussing the devil out. I mean, he just let him have it. And all of a sudden, he realized what he had done. He bowed his head and closed his Bible and walked out and got in the car and sat there with his head in his hands like that and crying. Deacon Chairman sitting on the front row got up, cleared his throat and said, Ladies and gentlemen, I heard what you heard. Never in my life have I ever heard such filth come out of the mouth of one man as came out of our pastor's mouth a while ago. But he said, I've been sitting here thinking, and you know what I believe? He expressed my feelings about the devil to a T. 
He said, I, I believe what he said was true. The devil's all he said and more. Now, he said he shouldn't have said it, and all of us know it. But let's thank God we have a pastor who hates the devil. He said, I make a motion. We stop and realize that our pastor came a life of wickedness and sin, hadn't been saved very long. Let's call him back in and give him a raise and pay and tell him we love him. Well, I need some extra money myself, so I won't tell you what I think about the devil. <laughs> Any of you guys want to raise? Come, come in. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what the devil's trying to do? Huh? When he said to Jesus, make the stones of the bread, he was trying to put a blemish on the lamb, and Jesus could not have paid the penalty for your sin and mine. That's what the sorry buzzard was trying to do. Because he knew that if Jesus did not please the Father, that would not be a faith and that would be sin. I wish I could somehow get you, get you from being cattywampus to understand what sin really is. Sin to God Almighty is when you don't please Him. And how you don't please Him is not the issue. The fact that you don't please Him is the issue. And all these things that we count as things that discomfort us and that are sin. And they are sin. But they're no more worse sin than a bunch of proud Pharisees who think they're better than people that commit the sins. That are just, they make them uncomfortable. You, Jesus reserved the, 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 his, his most scorching scolding for those people who were self-righteous but live without dependence upon him. He said, the devil was saying to Jesus, go up on a pinnacle of the temple and jump off. What was he saying? He was saying, don't please God. What pleases God? Dependence. Do it, on your own, do it in your own strength. Jesus could not have been the sacrifice for sin. Had he sinned. And sin is not depending on God. That which is not of faith is sin. 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 Housekeeping without faith is sin. Plowing without faith is sin. Operating a business without faith is sin. Preaching without faith is sin. Uh, working without faith is sin. Singing without faith is sin. School teaching without faith is sin. Secretary work without faith is sin. Why? Because faith pleases God. You don't have faith, you don't please God. And what is not a faith is sin. The Bible says that. I said this morning, I said again, sin starts a lot, a long time before the, the, the bartender comes the sin. And a long time before the rustling of unholy skirts comes the sin. And a long time before the cursing Comes the, comes the sin. The sin comes when a child of God or a human being created for the pleasure of God, a God who can only find pleasure in faith. If that child of God does something without faith, he does not please his God, and that becomes sin. I mean sin. You say, well, not real bad sin. There's no real good sin. It's sin. And the devil comes to Jesus. This is what he's saying. He's saying, Jesus, do it yourself. Why? He's trying to make him sinful. He's saying, show your power. You're God. Show your power. What he was trying to do, he was trying to get Jesus to slip from his humanity, his humanity dependent upon the Holy Spirit, perfectly dependent, to slip from his humanity into his deity and work as God. And if he had worked as God, he could not have pleased the Father, for the Father sent him to be the sacrifice for our sin, and he had to be a man depending upon the Holy Spirit. He said, show your power. He said, don't be dependent on the Father. He said to Jesus, believe on the Father, but do it as a, as a God. He said to Jesus, worship the Father, but do you work as God? He was simply saying to Jesus the same thing he said to Eve in the Garden of Eden and to Adam. He was saying... Do it, but don't do it with dependency. I will tell you something tonight. I will chimmy. If I stand behind this pulpit tonight and preach, 
without dependence upon my God for my strength. And I'll guarantee you, I prayed a thousand times today for God to give me help and strength as I preach tonight. Now, I, I, I mean a thousand. I don't mean exaggerating. I'll guarantee you. I prayed for God's power and God's strength upon me and God's help as I preached at least a thousand times this afternoon. And I'll guarantee you I prayed for that at least ten thousand times this week. I'll guarantee you at least ten thousand times this week. But for me to stand up here tonight and preach without dependence upon Him is just as bad as the fellow down here, the bartender, who's serving liquor down here. This little leap in, limp out tavern place tonight. Now let's put sin where it is. Some of the wickedest sinners in this world are sitting right here in this room tonight and have never tasted liquor in your life. Because what is not of faith is sin. Now what do we know? We know this. We know then he depended on the Father. We know he was acting not as God but man. We know if he had depended on himself he could not have had faith so he would have sinned and could not have been our Savior. I'm trying to show you the wickedness of not depending upon God. I'm not trying to minimize the wickedness of cursing. I'm trying to magnify the wickedness of not depending on God. I'm not trying to make the dirty sinner a clean sinner. I'm trying to make you a dirty sinner. I'm not trying to make the man clean who drinks liquor and goes to the body house. I'm trying to make you realize that if you don't do the things that you have listed on your little ten commandos of your life, if you don't do all those things, but you live a life that is not dependent on God, you don't please God and if that you don't please God you sin come on down off your high horse self-righteous Pharisee come on down with the rest of us sinners you walk in a class and teach a Bible class or any other class at Howells Anderson College tomorrow morning without dependence upon your God don't you criticize the bartender down the street here the thing of this, the sin of the bartender is that he's not pleasing God. If you do something without faith, that doesn't please God either. The sin is not drinking. Drinking is only a result of the sin. You take your life in your own hands and you drink. You take your life in your own hands, you disregard what God said, and uh, and you live an immoral life. You just take your life in your own hands and you do and you, and you cheat and you steal and you lie and you curse and you gamble. I want to tell you something, brother. That's not the sin. The sin goes back to the first time you decided that you could make it on your own without your God. And that puts us all on the same, on the same level. Two or three conclusions. Listen carefully, and I'll close. First, God is mainly interested. Now, hear carefully. Hear this carefully. God is mainly interested in what He can do for you. And not what you can do for Him. Then, after, hear me now, after God's interest in what He can do for you, then He is interested in what you can do for Him. But now hear this statement. This is the most important statement of the night. You're doing for Him is simply showing Him you're willing to let Him do for you. Let me say it again. You're doing for God is simply your way of showing God that you're willing to let Him do for you. Now follow me. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there they need meat in my house, says the Lord of hosts. And prove me now herewith, and see how I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room to receive it. What does God want to do the most? God wants to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. That's what He wants to do the most. But God will not do that until you let Him know you're willing for Him to do that. Well, how can you convince God you're willing for Him to bless you? By doing what He said to do. So what we do for God is simply uh, something that makes God react to our actions so God can do what He wants to do. If you abide in me, my words abide in you, ask what you will. It shall be done to you. What's God want to do? God wants to answer our prayers. Well, now then, what makes God answer our prayers? When we abide in Him and His Word abides in us, we convince God we're willing to let God help us. God will not help us without our volition. 
God's given us a will, and God says, I want you to let me help you. That's what it's all about. That's why there was a Garden of Eden. That's why there was an Adam. That's why there was an Eve. That's why there was a Cain. That's why there was an Abel. That's why there was a flower. That's why there was a tree. That's why there was a sunset. That's why there was a sunrise. That's why there was an animal. That's why there was a lake. That's why there was a river. That's why there was an ocean. That's why there are fish. That's why birds fly in the sky. Why? God wanted to do something for man. Why? Because when man relies upon God to do something for him, then that's what pleases God. Let me illustrate again with children. We love to do things for our children, don't we? But we don't want to interfere. And I'm the world's worst about that. Somehow or other, I guess I think I'm not very attractive anymore. Of course, I know my better judgment that isn't true. But sometimes I, I guess I think I'm not very attractive anymore. And if the girls say to me, Dad, could we spend some time with you? I have a hard time believing they mean that. And, and they've got to convince me that they mean that. And that's what God does. God says nothing pleases me but one thing. When I can take care of you. But he said, I will not take care of you until you ask me to. Convince me you want me to. So when you depend on me, I'll make this statement. Never said this before. God says, when you depend on me, then you can depend on me. Isn't that good? Why didn't you say amen? Amen. See, God says, when you will depend on me, you can depend on me. When you will depend on me, God says, I am dependable. And you can depend on me then. <laughs> Second time, you're pretty good. Let me say it again. I might even wake all of you up next time. But now, wait a minute. God wants to do for you. That's what pleases Him. All oh, ye mothers may gripe because they have to work all the time. But it pleases them to, to, to do for their children. Father, Dad may complain because he's tired and he gets home at night, but he, all he wants is some pampering. That's all he wants. It pleases him to support his family. And God is pleased only by faith. And faith is our dependence upon him. And when we learn to depend on him, that pleases God because that puts in operation his doing for us. But in everything that God does for us, He puts before that a stipulation that we're supposed to do for Him. Why? To convince Him that we want Him to do for us. And that we'll depend upon Him. That's what it means in Jeremiah 33. Call me and I'll answer thee. He didn't say, hey, I'll answer you and remind you to call me. God didn't do that. God didn't say, I'll answer you and then you call me. No, God said, I want you to know, I want, I want you to... You. <laughs> Uh, balls in your end of the court. You call me, I won't call you. You ever say this about a child, yours, or a friend? Yeah, it's his time to call. Your sweetheart ever say that? He thinks I'm going to be the one to call. He's mistaken. I'll guarantee you one thing. Both of you are saying that, but if either one of you called, you'd bump heads trying to get to the telephone because both of you won't talk to each other. And God is simply saying, I want to do for you. But he's saying, I must be convinced that you want me to. And the way you want me to is you doing for me. And that's what his promises are. His promises, almost all of them, are conditional promises. Why are they conditional? So we can convince God we want God to take care of us. He loves you. He loves you very much. He wants to supply your needs and be your strength and be your guide and be your help. He just wants to know if you want it. And the way he knows that is if you have faith or if you depend on him. If you depend on him, then he knows that and that pleases him very, very much. If you don't depend on him, that's sin. So you're one of two things tonight. You're pleasing God or you're in sin. We talk about folks falling into sin. Okay? Now, he fell into deep sin. 
If you did, the minute you didn't please God, anything you did. You get the morning by morning, go to work, work in your own energy, you fell into deep sin. You see, I want to close again now. I've been closing for several minutes. I usually close seven, eight times a sermon. I found years ago the best part of the sermon was to close. So I just close and close and close and close. See, to us the tragedy, I call it Catholic, to us the tragedy is the committing of the sin. To God the tragedy is what the committing of the sin keeps us from doing. To us, the committing of the sin is how bad it is. To God, the committing of the sin is you're not being able to be to Him what He wants you to be so He can be to you what He longs to be. That's to God. Now listen in our place again. And again. And again. I've used this illustration before. She grew up in our church from infancy. I knew when she was a junior. Junior high. I remember her first date. She was 13 or 14 years of age. I remember how I worried about her and fretted about her. I remember the day she got married. Grew up in our church. One of our fine young ladies. One of the finest families in this church. They live in another state now, but they were here for years. She had a little baby. She had another baby. Both baby girls. She came to my office one night. The girls now, up, at that time, they're up probably 8, 10 years old. One little girl was a picture of propriety just as polite as she could be and just as proper as any little girl like that could be. The other girl was retarded. And she was sort of spastic, sort of wild. And as we started to leave, I said to this girl that grew up in our church because her heart broke for her. I, I can recall when she was in vacation Bible school, she scared a silly billy and threw a in the old town. And I said to her, I'm sorry about your burden. She said, what burden is that, Brother Hiles? And I said, the daughter. And she looked at me almost offended, and she said, Brother Hiles, don't you ever be sorry about my daughter. She said, the daughter that's not normal will always be with me, and she'll always need me. And Brother Hiles, I love her and thank God for her, because she needs me. And that's what I had... That's one reason why Heavenly Father sometimes pays a little more attention to sinners than does self-righteous people. He says they need me. He just wants to be needed. That's all. The fall of man was caused by the devil wanting us not to please God. And the temptation of Jesus was sent to the devil trying to get Jesus to do good, but not to please God. Are you pleasing him? In every area of your life, is there an area you're thinking about right now where you're not dependent upon Him? Then you're not pleasing Him. And that's sin. 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 Then you're not pleasing Him. And that's sin.